The problem started when the Washington Nationals announced that a player tested positive yesterday for the virus. Then immediately four other Nats players quarantined due to contact tracing. But at the time, Nats GM Mike Rizzo said the game was still going to be played. Guys, it's a great day to have a great day because the Richmond Flying Squirrels have fallen right in line with state regulations. So that means we could be at full capacity for tonight's game against the Altoona Curve. For the first time in 86 years, World Series baseball is coming to the district. History was not on the side of the Washington Nationals entering last night's game in Los Angeles, but it's not about where you start, it's how you finish. The Korea Baseball Organization allowed teams to play ball for the first time since the pandemic, but the players were wearing a bit more gear than their usual uniforms. The Toronto Blue Jays opened their season in two days, but they're still looking for a new nest. The baseball season won't start with Scherzer or Strasburg on the mound. The Nationals announced today that Dr. Anthony Fauci will throw out the ceremonial first pitch of the season. In just a few minutes, the best and brightest of Class AA minor league baseball will get ready to shine under the lights of the diamond for the Eastern League All-Star Game. You won't find a more positive person in this world than Richmond Flying Squirrels Vice President and COO Todd Parney Parnell. With the squirrel season on hold due to the coronavirus, I caught up with Parney to see how he and the team are dealing with these unusual circumstances. It's been five wins and five games for the road team in the World Series. The Washington Nationals are hoping that trend continues tonight in Game 6 in Houston. The Houston Astros wore the American League crown last year. Today, the Minnesota Twins were trying to knock it off. Is there anyone in baseball better to start in a rubber match of a series than Max Scherzer? The Nationals don't think so, and the Cardinals probably don't after today. Today. Scherzer worked out of an early jam to toss six innings of shutout ball, holding the cards to four hits and striking out nine batters. His catcher, Alex Avila, did the rest, doubling to bring home Josh Bell with the only run of the game in the bottom of the second. It's going to take more than a broken nose to stop Max Scherzer. One night after a freak injury during a bunting drill, the ace was on the mound as Washington tried to sweep a home double header from Philadelphia. And guys, Scherzer was stellar, throwing seven innings of four hit shutout out ball with 10 strikeouts. More than bragging rights were on the line as Virginia and VCU tried to polish their NCAA resumes at the Diamond. Let's send you to the ballpark where VCU led 2 to nothing in the bottom of the first. Hunter Bay singled through the right side. Stephen Carpenter comes around and scores. Rams go up 3 to nothing after the first inning. Then the top of the second, UVA gets one. Logan Michaels doubled to left. Nick Kent scores. VCU still up 3 to 1. The Rams kept the momentum going in the bottom of the sixth. Chester, Virginia native Hunter Bay homers to right to make it 4-2 VCU. Both UVA and the Rams would score another run each. VCU takes this one tonight. 5-3 was your final score from the Diamond. The last time the Washington Nationals were on the road was Game 7 of the World Series. Although the stakes weren't as high tonight, things went just as well in New York. We send you to the top of the second. The Nats take the early lead when Drupal Cabrera hits a solo home run to left center field off of Steven Matz to make it one nothing Nats. Top of the third. They add to it. Trey Turner hits a two-run homer to left field, scoring Jan Gomes. It's 3 nothing Nationals. Same inning, the bats just continued to fly. Juan Soto this time hits a two-run bomb to center field. Starlin Castro scores to make it 5 nothing Nationals. Washington just kept cruising, winning 16-4. Cabrera bit his old team big time, going 4-4, four four, two homers. Three runs and five RBIs. After a walk-off loss yesterday, the VCU Rams got some payback in Blacksburg. Let's send you to the field. Already 2-1 Rams in the second. Tyler Locklear cracks one into the gap in right center for an RBI triple. Lead now 5-2 in the fourth. Check out the hustle here from Hunter Bay. His infield single drives in a run. The Hokies would get back. They'd rally. Lucas Donlin goes back up the middle. To make it a 6-5 game, but the Rams took it from there, winning 10-7. Odyssey Alexander took the sports world by storm, pitching through injury to help James Madison make a record run in the Women's College World Series. But it all began in a backyard in a small community in Mecklenburg County under the watchful eye of the man who raised her, her grandfather, Washington Alexander. We set up a, a little whale house for Delphore and marked off the spots that she needed to hit, and she, she really, really did. This was the plate. You know, the home plate, the grass kind of grew up over. But I'm going to dig it up now. And that's how she had it lined up. And this was her, her, the pictures that she had. And she really knocked that block in. 
It took a lot of pitches to get Odyssey Alexander from a small town to the Women's College World Series, and most of them were thrown right here. But well, that's how Odyssey got started when we helped. She did this seven days a week. Honest, she really did. When school was out, she'd come here in the evening and practice all day long. She was very determined. We had to make her had to come in the house and say, the girl's getting dog with that. You don't need to be there throwing that ball, but she really did because we had a light with her and she's a throw by the light. Washington Alexander remembers those days fondly. And this is when Odyssey um, signed up to go to Jane Madison. This is Odyssey in 2018 softball player of the year at Jane Madison University. Washington's health prevented him from making the trip to Oklahoma City, but he was there in spirit. Me and her were, well, me and her and my wife, we were very, very close. She called up just about out there, she, very, very close. She would talk to me a lot and say, Pop, this is for you. Because she knew uh, that I couldn't be there, and she, everything she did, especially when she said, Pop, this is for you. Odyssey received a standing ovation from fans of all teams when she came out of her final game against Oklahoma. I was kind of in tears myself. Because <laughs> I really, you know, I, well, I know she's going to say, Cece, you need to uh, get out of that. But I was, I think everybody was in tears. So she had tried so hard. And she, once she gave all she could give, she had tried really hard. And it didn't work out for her. So she, that's why she really, really broke down. And now she's an inspiration to girls in backyards across the world. If artists can do it, I can do it too. It, it, it makes them, I don't know how to put them in words, but yeah, believe in themselves that I can do anything. Opening day is just one sleep away for the Richmond Flying Squirrels and for team CEO Todd Parney Parnell, it can't come soon enough. By far the hardest 14 months of my life, by far the hardest 14 months in the squirrel's career and squirrel's life. But all along we tried to stay positive, right? All along we, we tried to live each day in the moment to get through that day to get to this. Parney, one change in the season is the schedule. The players will be playing a six game series instead of a three or a four. How is that change? I love it. I mean, I'm the old guy, right? Uh, you know how weird it is? Like now I'm on Zoom calls with all these minor league executives. I truly am the old guy in the room now. Like it's, it's wild because I don't feel that old, Natalie. I don't feel old at all. But I like it. It's very, you know, it's, it's never happened before you, you play six games in a row. But think about this. If you're a ball player during a pandemic times or at the end of pandemic times, you go to from Richmond to Altoona, Pennsylvania. You're there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In the old days, you'd leave Thursday night and drive through the night and get into a new hotel. Now you're there Tuesday through Sunday. It's safer. Parney, what are the emotions going to be like when the players take the field again here? I mean, I'll be crying like a baby, you know. I mean, I, I don't I can't even think about it. I mean, every day we've grinded through this thing. And we've looked at, you know, the payables on our bills. And we've looked at, you know, all the things that have just been terribly difficult to overcome. But as they said in Field of Dreams, the one thing that's constant, Ray, is baseball. And when they take that field again, our constant is going to be back. Opening day meant more to Flying Squirrels Vice President and General Manager Ben Rothrock. It was the first Squirrels game since he had open heart surgery in January of 2020. The whole last year was just a totally different game and um, you know, it was, it was the game of life and I had to do so many things just to survive. So Ben, how have you been able to, to cope with everything that's happened? You know, there's so many challenges that we had to overcome and to be able to take a step into what now is the future and to um, realize where you've been and now where you're going. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be fun, it's going to be exciting, and um, we're ready. The health scare combined with a season without baseball has made Rothrock grateful for what he has. You want to just embrace every single day, and I do. I, I embrace the challenge of preparing for a season. I embrace the, the ability to spend time with my wife and my kids. And, um, you know, that's something that I'll never take for granted ever again.